Welcome to the practical part of the acceptance test. Today we'll show you how to carry out an acceptance test with StartDrive using the example of a press. A few words on the machine itself. It's been fully commissioned, all safety equipment is connected and operational. Now we cannot see with the naked eye whether all the safety functions have been implemented according to the specification of the safety functions. And that's exactly why we carry out a function test. In the following steps we want to check and also document the correct function of the emergency stop and two-handed operation in setup mode. Let's start first with the function of the emergency stop. Is the specified safety function SS1 actually triggered when the emergency stop command device is pressed? Does the drive really decelerate on the defined braking ramp or does it perhaps coast down prematurely? We don't know and that's why we perform this function test and use the start drive acceptance test for this test and also for documenting the results. To do this we first open the acceptance test from the start drive using the start drive advanced option package and then select the safety functions safe stop 1 and safety limited speed with speed level 1 specifically for this drive. In the secondary navigation we can see that this test of the mechanical parameters has already been successfully completed and is marked green. We've already carried out this test in advance and will show it to you in a subsequent video on component replacement. For the SS1 test we first specify a test name and a trace duration and then start the test. The trace should last until the drive is completely stopped. We'll now be guided step by step through the acceptance test by clear instructions. In the first step the drive must be switched on. This can be done, for example, via the control panel or through the user program. In this example, we operate the complete machine via the control panel, in other words, the user program. We now test whether the correct drive moves, that's the press RAM. Then, we actuate the emergency stop command device, using it to select the safety function SS1, and then wait until the drive stops. Now for the most important part of the test, namely the trace analysis. We check that SS1 trips after the emergency stop command device is pressed, that the speed curve shown here in red corresponds to the braking ramp defined in the specification and that it's not interrupted prematurely. We also check whether the follow-up reaction STO trips approximately after reaching a standstill. In other words, not too early and not too late and whether the safe brake ramp monitoring shown here in blue is correctly set. In other words, approximately parallel with the braking ramp. We're now prompted to deselect SS1 again. This is done by unlocking the emergency stop command device. We can see that the SS1 test has successfully been passed and is marked with a green check mark in the secondary navigation. In the next step, we show you the function of the two-handed operation in the setup mode. To do this, we first select the setup mode using the rotary switch, acknowledge the faults and proceed to two-handed operation. We see that the press RAM is moving and in precisely this operating mode, a safe speed monitoring of 20 strokes per minute is required. If this limit is exceeded, SS1 should be triggered as a stop response. Again, we cannot see whether SLS has actually become active nor can we see whether the speed limit of 20 strokes per minute has been set correctly or whether SS1 has been configured as a stop response. And this is exactly why we carry out this function test and start the acceptance test in a similar way to the SS1 test. We first specify a test name, a trace duration, a pre-trigger and then start the SLS test. First, we are prompted to select SLS at the correct level that's speed level 1. In our example on the machine, this is already done by switching over to the setup mode. To check whether the SLS limit has been parameterized correctly, it must be possible to exceed the SLS limit value. This must either be done in the user program or alternatively via the drive control panel. In our example, the SLS limit is to be exceeded again via the control panel, in other words, the user program. We specify a set point above the SLS limit, for example 21 strokes per minute. The movement of the machine is now started again by means of two-handed operation. If the SLS limit is exceeded, we wait for the stop response and continue switching only when the drive actually stops. Now we return to the trace analysis. 
We check whether the drive is deactivated at the speed limit defined in the specification, whether the correct SLS stage has been selected and whether the shutdown procedure is carried out correctly after the stop reaction has been carried out. In other words, whether the drive is braked to a standstill as before in the SS1 test and does not coast down beforehand. And if all these criteria are met, we click to continue. We then acknowledge all the safety error messages and can see that the SLS test has also been successfully completed. We've not only performed the function tests for SS1 and SLS, but Start Drive Advanced recorded all the steps in the background. We click Complete to obtain a complete test record. The record consists of several tabs. Here on the cover page, you can add more information about your machine, for instance, the type, serial number, or you can also insert an overview diagram. Not only that, all the checksums and all the parameters and parameter values of the drive are automatically read out and logged. This means you save a great deal of time when reading out the checksums. On this sheet, all the function tests are now listed, and at the top, we find an overview of all tests performed. After this, all the function tests are displayed, including their detailed steps, and even the trace recordings have been automatically transferred to the log. On completing the protocol, you confirm that you've checked the checksums. You can also specify further information on the storage location for your parameterization, PLC program and circuit diagrams, and conclude the record with your signatures. This record is an essential component for validation and an important step towards getting the CE marking for your machine. And that's it. We've performed the acceptance test on the machine, using the example of the press, and checked and documented all the functions. The whole thing works in the same way for all other drive safety functions. And if you now want to see what to remember when replacing components, join us again in our next video. See you soon. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.